Hello friends, welcome. In today's video, I will be talking about the anti-fouling system on board the ships. I will also discuss certain common questions that may be asked during the oral examinations. So let's get started. So anti-fouling system convention, also called the AFS convention, was adopted on 2001 and entered into force in 2008. So as you know, if something is underwater, there will be a marine growth on it, because of which there is a resistance to the ship's movement which increases the fuel consumption. Thus the ships were painting the hull of the ship with a special paint which was called anti-fouling paint. However, later it was found out that these anti-fouling paints, some of them had contents which were really harmful to the marine organisms and also to the humans because they were entering the food chain. Thus the anti-fouling convention came into existence. It was brought to prohibit such harmful substances to be used in the anti-fouling paints. So as mentioned earlier, previously these anti-fouling paints used to slowly discharge themselves into the sea, although killing the barnacles and other marine life which was attached to the ship, but also they were getting added to the seawater which were entering the food chain. Thus under the terms of AFS convention, parties to the conventions are required to prohibit or restrict the use of harmful anti-fouling system on ships flying their flag as well as all ships that enter a port, shipyard or offshore terminal of a party. Now question is how do I know if a certain paint is prohibited or not? So Annex 1 of the AFS convention contains a list of prohibited items. These prohibited chemicals must not be used in the anti-fouling paints. The convention includes a clause which states that a ship shall be entitled to compensation if it is unduly detained or delayed while undergoing inspection for possible violation of this particular convention. The convention applies to all the ships including fixed and floating platforms, floating storage units and floating production storage and offloading units. The convention provides for the establishment of a technical group to include people with relevant expertise to review, prohibit or restrict other substances used in anti-fouling system. Although the list of substances keeps getting renewed, but there is an absolute ban of the use of TBT in the anti-fouling paint, which stands for tributyl tin or TBT, a biocide which came into being in the 1970s. Although it had brilliant anti-fouling properties over the ship's hull, it prevented the growth of algae, barnacles and other marine organisms, but it had certain side effects like TBT's harmful effect causes disruption of endocrine system of marine shellfish, which leads to the development of male sex characteristics in female snails. It results in malformation of the shell of a shellfish. It impairs the immune system of the organisms. It has other genetic effects in the other marine species. TBT has been described as the most toxic substance ever deliberately introduced into the marine environment. It is used as a fungicide, bactericide, insecticide and wood preservative, known to be harmful to a range of aquatic organisms. The main problem was its persistence in the marine environment. As a result, IMO in 1990 adopted a resolution recommending governments to adopt measures to eliminate anti-fouling paints containing TBT. In 1999, IMO adopted an assembly resolution that called on the MEPC to develop an instrument which shall be legally binding throughout the world to address the harmful effects of the anti-fouling system used on ships. The resolution called for a global prohibition on the application of organiton compounds which acts as a biocides in anti-fouling system on ships by 1st January 2003 and a complete prohibition by 1st January 2008. Since the ban on anti-fouling paint of TBT type, several types of anti-fouling paints have come to the market. As the rule of IMO regarding anti-fouling paints become more stringent day after day, the paints have become more environmental friendly with least effect on marine environment. Now time to discuss some survey questions related to this topic. One common question is, what is done in the docking survey and why is it required only in the dock. So this is done basically to inspect the bottom part of the ship 
to check for rusting and wastage of the hull if any and basically there are two bottom ship surveys that are required in every five years one of them can be carried out as an in-water survey however if the ship's age is 15 years or more then in-water survey is not allowed another common question related to anti-fouling is how will you know the paint to be used underwater and the area required and tell where anti-fouling paint is to be applied so there are a lot of places that a person may refer to there is data supplied from the yard and ensuring that the banned substances listed in Annex 1 of the AFS Convention are not there in the paint. Also, you may consult the approved anti-fouling system which is there on board. And anti-fouling system is applied till the summer load line marking. Also note that there is a coating technical file where all the data related to paint can be found. I hope this was a useful video for you. If you have any feedback, suggestion or comment, then please do write down below. All the best for exams and as always, thank you for watching.